Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, back with Lorraine again. Yay! Yay! Lorraine is back from Florida. Oh, yes. How, how long have you been back? You've been back, been back I've been back a few weeks, three wow. maybe, four. Yeah, how oh, you liking wow. our, our main spring? I'm just too impressed. <laughs> it's cold and it's wet. It's like, I feel like I'm in England or something. No, there's anything wrong with England. Oh my gosh, we're going to get letters. Oh, no, no. <laughs> No, oh, yeah. but yes, it has been very, very rainy and chilly this spring, but it'll get better. It always okay. does. All right. <laughs> We're holding out. Oh, I had one comment before we start questions. Um, somebody had asked me about um, using my camera, and I was well, like, well, I can't take video of my video camera on my thing because I need my video camera to take the video. The video. And so what I did was uh, I have this kind of, I would set this on my desk just like this, see, big and open. So I'm working in this area under here. That's like my workspace and the desk is under here. This is a little strap. And what I did was um, I took um, an exercise band and it was long, you know, those long kind of exercise Yeah, this with. is the best way to use an exercise <laughs> band. <laughs> Theoretically. <laughs> And I just I just cut off a little piece of it and I sewed Velcro to each side so I get the stretchy strap and then I would just wrap it around my camera and Velcro it in so it was nice and tight up to that um, up to the middle post here so this is going around here I kind of have it kind of looped under and around and around my camera so my camera's facing down and that's how I harnessed it up every camera is different so you're gonna need a slightly different configuration for your camera I'm not even saying it's the best thing to do I mean I might end up dropping it or it might end up putting pressure on a button and damaging my camera you know so you know just be cautious I try to make sure this isn't pressing on anything while my camera is in its harness but it's working really well and that weird jiggly sound I was getting on some of my videos seems to have been eliminated with this so yeah, it, it's working for me. I can't, you know, I can't say that it's not going to damage your camera if you do something like that. But for me, it's working. There you go. Whatever works. All right. Question. Okay. Henry Cruiser says, I have a dilemma. Just starting to get into digital stamping, and I just purchased some 140-pound watercolor paper to use. Now, here's the dilemma. I can't run the paper through my printer because it's too heavy. Any suggestions on how to get the digital stamps? From my computer to the paper, thanks. I have a couple um, suggestions. I have the same problem because my my printer takes is a bottom feed printer, so the paper has to bend almost in half to get oh, back yeah. out. Mm -hmm. So um, what this is, I'm going to show you. I just had this here because um, I when I'm doing watercolor paper, I usually do a drawing on like a scrap paper, and then I use um, transfer paper to put it onto my watercolor paper. So you'll see this is darker on one side than the other. And so you put the dark side down on your paper, then you put your pattern on top to trace, and then you trace over it, and it and the uh, black lines from your transfer paper are um, transferred onto your watercolor paper, so you don't have to worry about anything oh. leading. And you can get that at an art supply store. You want to find graphite paper if you can, not carbon paper, because it'll be a much softer line. Um, and if you can't find that, what you can do is you can actually just scribble on the back of your printout with a pencil, lay that down, and draw over it, and you'll have very light pencil lines that you can work from. Um, so that's probably the best suggestion. Um, if you do find you can get your watercolor paper through your printer and your ink is running, you can uh, trace over it with a clear colored pencil. Prismacolor makes colorless blender pencils, and um, you can draw right over your lines, and then you can watercolor over them because that, that clear wax seals them in. So Very good. Yeah. Okay, Sugar Ray Crafts says, Lindsay, I have a couple long gnomes and a cement deer <clears throat> that belong to my great-grandmother. They are in need of repainting. I don't know what kind of paint or sealer to buy, so they will be weather hardy. And because of my t tight budget, do you know of a kit of some sort so they don't have to buy a large quantity of paint sealer for just these three projects? Thank yes. you. Actually, um, what I would recommend, and I actually, when you said kit, I remembered <laughs> that I did have a kit. This is by, um, it's the One Stroke by Folk Art. Um, so they do have little sets with different brushes. And um, this was a kit. I actually got this at Martin's, um, and it was a. Uh, it came with those rags. Didn't come with a kit, but you get your own rags and rip up your own <laughs> towel, your own rags. But um, it's folk art enamels, and you can buy them just the colors you want individually. But they do have kits in the two ounce bottles, and I think they also have the kits in the little pots, the little flip top pots. But these are fantastic. Uh, the paint goes a long way. It will cure at room temperature uh -huh. in 21 days. Or um, if it's an item small enough that you can put in your oven, you let it cure for 24 hours and then you can bake it for 30 minutes at 350. The instructions are right on the bottle, so double check before you actually do it. But I use this, my kids make um, 
like hand painted mugs for their teachers, you know, paint and ceramics. Oh. Um, it's a wonderful paint and it's uh, folk art enamels. I just want to find one that's got a very clear label on it so you can see. But you can get those at any craft store. They're about $1.75 a bottle or you can get a kit. Um, I think if you're doing lawn furniture, you might want to, um, like the statues, mm -hmm. I think you might want to get individual bottles and the colors you need. And as long that's as you cap great. them up they'll, and you don't let them freeze, they'll be a really good, uh, they'll last a long time and be really good for you. But I think that's the best deal. You don't need a sealer after that? And they do make a clear sealer. Um, you can go over it, but honestly, I really, like that's enough. Great. Yeah. I mean, maybe outdoors you might want the sealer, but it's, it's really durable paint. Huh. I didn't know that. Shanika Shakena, Freddie, says, can you do a video comparing the difference between watercolor pencils and watercolor paints? Which is better and easier to learn? I have a watercolor competition. So can you do the video as soon as possible <laughs> if you are interested in doing it at all? Well, I have a lot of videos on watercolor pencils and watercolor paints. I would recommend you review a few of those, but I think the watercolor pencils probably give you a little bit more control um, just because you could put out a little bit of color, wet it, put out a little bit more, wet it. You could also use your wet brush on the tip of the watercolor pencil to put color on your brush and then under the paper. So for a beginner, I think the watercolor pencils might actually offer you more control and be a little more versatile. Mm. I started that actually a little bit this year. Oh yeah? I was quite brave. Oh, how's it going? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. Well, Florida, that's a perfect place. You have all the beautiful plants and bloom all the time. Yeah. So Lillian wants to know how to make a fancy frame without a die cut machine. Oh, um, well, here's a tip I used to do before I had a die cutter, is I would cut the outside of my of my fancy frame, either use a stencil for a shape or print something off the internet, and then um, in the middle, I would cut an X, and then I would either roll back the, you know, the flaps, you'd end up with four triangles, mm -hmm. oh. or I would fold it back and then trim it so I had like a three-dimensional frame. So that way you can use whatever shape you want and just cut an X in the middle and, and either cut out the square or fold it back. Folding it back gives you a nice edge. That sounds nice. Yeah. MVAS294 says, Hi Lindsay, I'm having a difficulty coordinating pat pattern papers. I would like to use two to three different patterns on a page, but they always seem to look a little weird. I can anchor them with a piece of cardstock, but the patterns almost always throw my designs off in some way. Also, clustering embellishments is the newest thing, and I would like to get better at it. Any ideas? Well, All right. Well, let's uh, talk about the pattern paper first. Um, nowadays, you can buy a lot of stacks and mini pads yeah. of paper, and the, the uh, colors carry over from one sheet to the next, so then you have some color harmony. So the first way to probably make your col your patterns match would be to get the same color in the same color family. So if you had like a mini stack from basic gray, you know, use a few of those sheets. They will coordinate together. They're designed to do that because it is popular to mix all the patterns up. The other thing you can do is use the same pattern but in different colors. So you could do polka dots the same pattern polka dots in a bunch of different colors or stripes in a bunch of different colors or you could do all the same color with a bunch of different patterns so those are probably two ways to get used to mixing those colors mixing those patterns comfortably and then you could start pulling like um, I find that a lot of patterns can actually be neutral so if you had like a damask that was brown or gray you could take that and mix it with like a floral that's got like warm reds in it mm. or a floral with like cool purples in it if, if, if it was a black one so you know I'd stick with basic you know basic patterns like mix a bunch of damask patterns and mix a bunch of polka dots and once you get comfortable with that then start you know playing with the colors and yeah, yeah I'm paying attention to this color wheel <laughs> business oh yeah oh yeah she's <laughs> brushing up on the color wheel oh yeah <laughs> do you think well do you think that it's a good yeah okay that sounds like a good way to start and what is this clustering embellishments a uh, clustering embellishments is very popular to kind of have a big um, so maybe you have like a one photo layout and then you might have like maybe a doily peeking out from behind the photo Then maybe a few buttons on that maybe a couple flowers tucked in and then maybe a few gems so, But it's all kind of in a cluster. Oh, okay And I think the easiest thing to do when you're clustering is to find something to anchor everything So um, it's kind of like how you would mat a photo, but you kind of mat the cluster So maybe you had a big stencil of a doily or you have a big um, or maybe even just some spray ink Give a couple spritzes of spray ink in the area you want the cluster and then put down your photo then put down your doily then put down all your different things with it like within that uh, splat of color and that will help um, bridge everything together and help it coordinate even though all you did was spray a couple bits of color it kind mm -hmm. of it kind of encompasses it and makes it not look like you know you just threw up a bunch of embellishments on your scrapbook page oh that sounds good like the sticker the sticker sneeze remember sticker sneeze oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Kate BTPS has two quick questions. How to clean acrylic paint off foam brushes? And two, how do you stop wet paper from curling as you dry it with a heat gun? Oh yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, well, with the uh, with the heat gun, I find that if I alternate, like I'll flip it, like this paper was um, shameless promotion, Mallard Duck tutorial now available in my shop. Um, <laughs> so this was soaked, and I didn't tape it down, but when I was drying it, and I found it was curling, I flipped it over and I dried the back side, so it kind of um. evens out the tension. And I mean, this has a little bit of a curve to it, but once I put it under a mat, it's gonna be nice and flat. So that's one thing, just heat it from the other side. Um, I think that's probably the just the quickest and easiest. And as far as cleaning foam brushes, the key is to clean them while the paint is still wet. Once that paint dries, you're not going to be able to rescue it. Um, the, the solvents you would need right. to dissolve the um, acrylic paint will also dissolve your foam brush, so you just have to be on top of it. Toss it right in a bucket of water when you're done and wash it when you have a chance. Yeah. Anita G says, do you know what I can use to remove liquid watercolor from my carpet? When my order arrived, two of the caps were loose, the magenta and the red. The red streak is really quite lovely, but I don't think there's enough product to cover the entire floor. <laughs> Do you have a remedy? You get your stencils <laughs> and your spraying. Yeah. Um, actually, because, you know, I have three children, I know all about getting stains out of the carpet. And if your carpet is light color, like, you know, the Berber wool, mm -hmm. you know, those light kind of whites and grays, yeah. um, there's a product at the Dollar Tree called Amazing Oxygen. It's like an OxyClean. It's a powder. And you sprinkle some of that on the stain and then you just squirt water on it and it will bubble up and it will clean it. You just keep blotting it off with a paper towel or rags and then you can wash it with a little carpet shampoo. Um, another thing you could try if it's a white carpet or a light carpet is um, put baking soda on the stain and then squirt it with peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, and that will get that stain out. I used to have to wash my carpets all the time when my when my uh, kids were little just because there was always stuff spilled or they were spitting up on it. Or, oh, yeah. yeah. So, Great. Yeah. If it's a dark, test it, I'm going to test it in an area under uh, a piece of furniture if it's a dark carpet. Right. Um, that, that oxygen stuff is pretty good, and it's, you know, a dollar a mm, tin. Yep. Great. Donna Luters says, where do you get your watercolor tubes of paint, and what is a good brand to buy? I am definitely not a watercolor artist, basically just starting out, and I don't have a lot of money to spend. But I love the way you can just squeeze out the amount on your palette and keep refilling it. Thanks. Um, well, if you're a beginner and you want to get kind of a setup for a little amount of money, I would recommend the Reeves brand of watercolors. They are made by the same company uh, that makes Winsor & Newton and the Cotman lines of paints, but they're um, geared more to a student. Um, they're not going to have your, uh, your chemicals, and it doesn't have like um, cadmium and cobalt and those expensive pigments, which are also toxic, so you wouldn't want them, you know, if you're going to let your kids use these anyway, or um, if you have the habit of dipping your paintbrush in your cup of tea while you're working accidentally instead of the water bucket, you know, just to <laughs> for safety's sake, I do that. I do that all the time. Oh yeah. Um, but anyways, it's R E E V E S, and you get like a, two, a set of eighteen for. It used to be ten. It might be a little bit more now, but it's not a lot. And you can get them at AC Moore and um, Hobby Lobby many stores or online and um, the thing I really like about it is you squirt it out in your palette and as you use it up you'll see what colors you really use a lot then invest in like the Cotman line for those oh, colors yeah. so as you've you you build experience and you start to use up your paint then you can replace two by two with a nicer brand um, and that it, but it's a, still a decent color uh, quality of paint and the thing I like about it is it's easy to lift so if you're a beginner and you're making mistakes it's very easy to wet that brush wet that paint blot it off and do it again oh so um, good. There was it was there. Oh, and a couple of people asked me about glycerin in the paints because sometimes the cheaper paints tend to crack in your watercolor palette. Um, so when you square out your paints, just put a drop of glycerin in each one, stir it with a toothpick, and it'll keep it moister and easier to use. Glycerin. Glycerin. MCK Campbell says, I have a lot of leftover powder dye from coloring ribbons and tie dyeing. I'm wondering in the crafting world of paper, can these be used in that medium? like spritzers, watercolor, stamping, or just using as a paint mix with another medium. Thank you beforehand for any suggestions. Oh, okay. yeah, you can make uh, spray inks. The cool thing about dyeing paper is that you don't need to go through all the um, rigmarole you do when you're dull, when you're dyeing fabric. It doesn't have to be hot. You don't have to have soda ash. You don't have to uh, heat set things. It's, it's going to stain your paper, and, you know, really, it's all you need it to do. So, yeah, you can mix it in a spray bottle of water, make your own ink sprays. You can add some a pearlescent watercolor to it or sort of pearlescent powder and you can make your own shimmer sprays. You can use it to dye your ribbons and um, your doilies, anything that doesn't need to be washed. You won't have to take any special precautions with. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. all. Really? That's all wow. Questions. We were quick. Yeah. I were guess. we? 
I, I think so. Well, I had a peek up there because I was losing. I uh, it's like about oh, 15 minutes. I was, I was like, oh, I forgot my stopwatch. Man, I don't want to stop. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, oh, casually peek at the time. <laughs> no, I would have to get a little bit closer with my glasses. Get my trifocals going right. <laughs> yes. Well, I played up Kathy here too, but she uh, was still feeling a little under the weather. Uh, I think uh, somebody told me it's a really bad year for pollen because uh, everything is, is coming into bloom at once because of a really, really long winter. So the people that have that, oh, my daughter and grandson, they are terrible. Uh, oh, it's I know. Awful. And I've never suffered from allergies, I know, but I have been like, you know, sniffling all week and between horse camp and, you know, everything like that. I think just being around the horse dander. And horse camp. Oh, that's fun. Yes. I remember that fondly. Uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't on the horse. I was just working. Oh, yeah, I wasn't on the horse either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They let the kids yeah. take home uh, horse toenails the oh, last day. that's exciting. They stank so bad. Because I saw them, like, oh, isn't that cute? We put them on the scrapbook page. I'm like, we put them on the scrapbook page. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're in the car. I'm like, oh, roll down the windows. It stinks <laughs> so bad. Oh no! And then we get home and the dog took one and was going oh, off. Oh like, yeah, like, no, those things no. right <laughs> I don't know. It was like like a chicken bone. And went, like, oh yeah. I don't know. Like that. Ah. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> that is not going in the house nor in the scrapbook. <laughs> it was so gross. Oh yeah, it is. When you think about, <laughs> yeah, where it's been, <laughs> where it's been. <laughs> oh man. Oh yes. <laughs> oh well, I guess that. I does it for us? Yeah. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe or thumbs down if you don't care for this. But if you're still here, I'm hoping that we would earn a thumbs up. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> fabulous. All right. We'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Happy crafting.